what is up guys and welcome to a brand new episode on this channel which I have decided to name manager swap solely the whole point of this is going to be I get two managers one of a great quality who is at a great team and one who's at a not so great quality at not such a good team and I swapped them around and basically see if the great manager can be successful with a team of low quality player low finances in a low division and if the lower quality manager can still can do good things with a great team great players and great finances so that's simply how it is and I just I don't know what made me actually want to do this I just thought of one day and says well look I'm gonna do it and there will be more of it if obviously this one is successful and if you guys enjoy this and and all that good stuff so today we are gonna take let's see if I can find them we are gonna take wait, hold on. right so of course the first person is gonna be Jose Mourinho we all remember Blackpool back in 2000 and was it 9, 2010? Well, well, I can just, I can actually just look at it here. Yeah, so 2010-11 in the Premier League. And surprisingly, they actually done very well. It was unlucky. Uh, I think United actually sent them down on the last day. But however, we've brought Jose Mourinho, who has proven to be a successful manager. We've brought him into Blackpool United. My football club, but where I'm going to be United, and then um, a team who's professional and natural reputation, national reputation, and okay finances. Don't worry, I'm not going to completely slate a manager by putting them at a team that's impossible to to manage. Like, um, so let's have a, a quick look at the players. Uh, we're not going to delve too much into it because it's more about the manager's quality, and that includes players that he brings in. Now. There's, uh, let's see if I can, can I um see the star rating? No, I, I can't see a star rating or anything like that. So, basically, the, the players we're going to have to look at, um Andy Taylor is counted as the best player. And for League 2, he actually does have very good, strong stats. And it remains to be seen, obviously, of course, as the season goes on, who Mourinho is going to pick as his best 11. So, Andy Taylor is the left back. Yeah, let's have a look. Kyle Vassel, 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 whatever his name is. Um, I suppose the, the real two things we're going to look at, and this is his finishing and his pace, really. That's it, uh, and well, his acceleration, I suppose. His first touch is kind of good, but everything else is just mediocre. Definitely a two. That's that's all I can say about him. Um, then we have. Well guys, sorry about that, I accidentally stopped the cordon completely. So, as I, if I can remember correctly, I was just about to pass over El Coyle Vassal here. We, I still can't grasp his name. But, we have up next, Tom Aldred, um, only 25 years of age and seems like one of the stronger players in the team. Um, mentally, anyway. Uh, Probably want to have some good mental stats in uh, League 2 football. But heading toward the end, great mark and 12, great tackling, great. He does have a great outlook for a, a good, strong centre-back. He uh, can play some sort of right-back position. I can't imagine him being any good there. He'd be defensive. Oh, excuse me. He'd be part of a defensive uh, flat-back four, as I can think of. Uh, then we have the experienced, oh jeez, an awful lot of gas, Ian Black, defensive midfielder, pretty strong, uh, what would we be looking for in defensive midfielder, tackling, maybe yeah, maybe yeah, tackling, nine, yeah, see obviously it depends on what role he plays as well, I don't have that um, accessibility unfortunately, but all in all, a 31 year old, does look like a strong player, a very good player for League 2. If you remember in my journeyman save with Bohemians, we got uh, Graham Coutinho Curry, who was actually at League Two side, and he was just unbelievable. Like, and then 
I suppose he was only what 26 I think at the time as well no he wasn't he was 28 I don't know what I'm talking about 28 29 but like his stats just like would have dominated these and he was an attacking midfielder but he just had green 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 unbelievable player uh, up next we have Mark Cullum a uh, 24 year old striker seems actually fairly good I'm not going to lie he does seem like a good player for League 2 his first touch could be a little bit better but I suppose he is only 24 with great determination and great work rate that's what you want to see in someone who's up and coming no matter what region you look at work rate um, determination of course uh, I'd like to look for teamwork as well uh, as for their good stats but um as well obviously along with a few other ones but you get the layer gets on the game you get these 40 or 15 year olds that it's going to take about 20 years for them to to produce any talent anyway very right, up next we have colin daniel yeah he's okay I suppose a 28 year old he is okay cross and driven very good for the league too yeah so he'd, be, he'd probably be a first choice um Neil Dance he used to be he used to play for Birmingham did he not did not play for Birmingham at some stage or was it not Birmingham yeah he did play for Birmingham look yeah yeah he only played there for two years in the Premier League yeah so we had Neil Dance Um, oops he's a solid-ish kind of midfielder he is getting on there a bit in his age as well so uh I can't imagine Mourinho would be really playing him. Nathan Delafonso. Um, who did this chap used to play for? Can I remember? Aston Villa. If I recall well. Was it Aston Villa? Yes, it was Aston Villa. Yes. Memory serves me great. Um, he actually first came out of Aston Villa. He, he was supposed to be the fairly good player. And, well, yeah, he's not. Um, he, he's supposed to be a striker. I would have thought he was more of a winger by looking at his stats. Like the first three I look at is pace, his crossing and his dribbling. And they're stronger than his finishing. <laughs> so I would have just assumed he's got to be a good winger. Well, suppose he's a striker and can kind of play in the wing positions. Next up we have Jordan Forbes. I'm not going to go through all the team. I'm just going to go through some of them. Because uh, it may be a big team. Yeah, John Forbes seems like just really a backup player. Well, he's only 20 years of age. He's not long from Wigan, so actually he may not be a backup player at all. Just by looking at his stats, though, they are kind of weak. Very good passing. His dribbling is, is good. Yeah, he actually does actually have very, very good uh, stats. Very good off the ball. Yeah, so he's good. Um, Armand Nagdulet. Nan, Nan Dulet. Nan yeah, him, Arnold. Um, he's actually a very strong forward, isn't he now? Well, yeah, he, he, he'd be my star, man. Well, so far. So far he would. Next up we have Luke Higgum. 19 years of age, left back. Yeah, he possesses a good bit of uh, talent there. 11 crossing, 11 marking, 12 tackling. See, this is the type of man you look for in League 2. He offers you more than one ability. Like, he has good defending attributes, uh, just in terms of marking and tackling. And he has a good attacking attribute in terms of his pace and his crossing. Dribbling is a load of shit, but you don't need much dribbling in League 2, do you? just runs straight. Yeah, his composure is good, his decisions are good, his team works very good, and work very yeah, he seems like a good, good up and coming player. Then you have Dean Lyons, a uh, goalkeeper. Yeah, he looks strong, doesn't he? For League 2, 12, 10, 10. 12, 12, 12. Yeah, he is. He's good. He's good. I'd, I'd look for someone like him. If not better. <laughs> uh, then you have Jamil Matt. That's a good name, isn't it? He'd be more of a, a backup kind of a backup forward for me now. 11 finish and there's definitely been better there for us there's definitely been better there for them now Jim McAllister there's, there's always one isn't there at a team in the league too one player that nearly plays in every single this he, this chap is the Steven Gerrard if anyone remembers Steven Gerrard when he was in football manager as a player 
He could literally play every single position, apart from striker and goalkeeper. I was saying that actually, I think he was orange or something for a striker, but he could literally play every position. And this is the man that we always have in every League Two team, and he's still not that good of a player. No, no, he's getting a bit on now in his age, but I suppose you had to throw him in there for the experience. He, I, I guarantee he he's probably the captain anyway. Then you have Kelvin Meller. Whoa, oh, Jesus Christ, he has an awful lot of positions as well, doesn't he? Anywhere up the right. Nearly anywhere through the middle. That's, that's a nice little league decrease in positions, isn't it? Like 4 3 2. That's just a nice little, nice little shape to it. But anyway, yeah, there's his stats. Uh, there's no point in me like, saying about all our stats now because like, we know they can play well. Uh, Eddie Nolan. Yeah, he actually looks yeah, he's, his pace kind of lets him down, I suppose, but and that he's good cross and good force touch. His marking is good and his tackling is very good. Great teamwork and work rate as well. Good aggression for a defender. Yeah, he's a good player. And then you had Sanmi Adelusi. Adelusi. There's an awful lot of strikers in that league that was in that very early on. Then we have Bray Ol uh Ole Samuel, Osei Ose, Ose Samuel, okay, yeah, that's not easy to say, um, this is probably going to be the skill merchant in the team, uh, plays on the left originally, but he can play on the right, 15 pace, 16 dribbling, and his crossing is 11, so he's only 18 as well, and he has a great determination rate as well, mm. so Mourinho might have a few good players on his hands here, Jack Payne, we have he's a good he's a very good player. Um then we have Danny Phyllis Phyllis Cork. Jeez, these names are hard and are English. Uh another good player, striker again. Jeez, not for strikers. Brad Potts. <laughs> Potts. Brad Potts, what a name. Uh for League Two he's a very solid player and a very young age as well. Clark Robertson, very good. Not really very good mentals, I suppose. Um, his heading could be a bit better for a, for the centre back. Um, Sam Slocum, Slocham, Slocom, Slocom goalkeeper. Probably be a backup goalkeeper if uh, by my preference. And then back to Andy Taylor. So that is him. Oh, that is that team even. So we're gonna have to go all the way back now again. Do this and see Manchester United. Right. There's not much point in running through this. Look, we know they're in the Europa League, this, that, you know, blah, blah, blah. We know what what players they have. Karik, Ibrahimovic, Schweinsteiger. He actually said to leave. He's, he's actually leaving um, Man United in reality. Um, Sergio Romero, Wayne Rooney, Ashley Young, blah, 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 blah. So we know those players. But what I'm going to do is, right, I'm going to fast track to the end of um end of the transfer window so i'm gonna go to the 4th of september or no not the 4th of september say the 10th of september right we do that just the whole there's a whole number for you uh 10th of september and see what transfer business they've done if any you know and just see what kind of quality player they brought in right so we'll do that and we will be right back guys. right guys so we are back and um who to start with now? Uh, I'm gonna go and start with Manchester United. Manchester, Manchester. Right, so main Ray, right, he's still there. It could have been it was just impossible for him to get sacked anyway. So let's just see who he's after bringing in. Ray. Right. Nobody. You're at Hmm. He's let Josh Hardup go. Um, he's let him go on. Uh, did he sell him? No, he's on loan. Sorry, let him go on loan. Right. Fair enough. Um, he's loaned out Marilyn. Mar. He's sold out. Oh my God, Wards. He's loaned out Fellaini to uh, Villarreal. And he's loaned out Ashley Young. Right. 
in fairness, an awful lot of United supporters, supporters may be actually glad to see Fellaini gone and Young. I don't know. I, I don't know what your view is on them. I just think Fellaini's there for hairstyles and Young's there for the diving. Um, but that's just my opinion. So let's now go and check. Um, Blackpool and see if Mourinho has bought well hold on actually hold the phone go back to Manchester United first we never checked their schedule right so <coughs> whoa they've played a few games um Glen Torrent they beat 3-0 Martial with 2 Eric Bailey with 1 uh Racing Club, the Lens, 2 0, Rooney and Ibrahimovic, Hernandez, uh, Martial, Rooney and Rashford, Bordeaux, Ibrahimovic, and James Wilson. Then beat Bayern Munich, <sighs> Wayne Rooney and Paul Pogba and Fellaini, Bernie Mandy let out. Then Rooney's testimonial was 2 0, Rooney scoring, and um, Rashford. Then they played Leicester in. The Community Shield, Marcus Rashford with a goal, Daily Blaine getting sent off in the 62nd minute, and Timothy Fosu Mensa with the winner in the 80th minute, 10 minutes from time. Then their first game of the season against Burnley, and it was 1 0. Zlatan Ibrahimovic with the goal, and Wayne Rooney getting sent off. Uh, Chelsea then, they beat 1 0, and Ibrahimovic scored the winner in the 70th minute. Then they played AFC Barmount where Ibrahimovic scored two and Henrik Mkhitaryan with the tour. Well, not with the tour, but he got another goal himself. Right. So they've made no transfers. They um they haven't lost a game yet. And are toured in the lake. And Liverpool are forced. Get in there. Um Yeah, okay. Hmm. So now let's go to Blackpool. Right, this this is this could be interesting. Right, first of all, they're gonna have a quick look at the transfers. They brought in one player. Right, so that's a sign. They didn't get any goal. They just brought in a player, Nathan Broadfoot from Everton. Mm. Trying to pick the positives out of this one. Really am. Eh. Uh, Look, good pace. This flare is unbelievable. That's about it. That is about it. But let's have a look now at their schedule. Schedule. Right, so unlike El Gary Bowyer at Manchester United, um, Mourinho has lost two games. But in his first game, he played a lower, uh, beat them 3 0. Let's see who the goals are from. <coughs> Nathan Del Sonzo, Neil Dans, and Will Ameson. Never heard of him, I don't even remember him when we were going through the teams. Then he played Tranmere United, uh, Tranmere Rovers and lost 2 1. Rotherham United drew nil all. Hemel Hempstead, they won 3 0. Andy Taylor, Mark Cullen, Nathan Del Sonzo with the goals. And then their first league game against Exeter, and the new boy, Nathan Broadhead, got a goal along with Jack Payne. They then played Wigan in the League Cup first round, losing 2 1, and Nathan D'Alfonso getting an early goal, just wasn't good enough. They then played Markham in the League 2 uh, fixture, and Danny Phil Scork scored, and Nathan D'Alfonso scored. Then they got a draw against Barney and another draw against Wickham Wanderers. They then went on to play Plymouth and beat them 2 1. Jordan Flores, uh, Flores and Nathan Delafonso. He's been scoring nearly every bleeding game now. Um, and then they played Blackburn Rovers under 23 in the EFL Trophy Group A. <laughs> um, and that uh, was Coyle Vassal and Jim McAllister. So let's take a quick look at the table. And they're forced in the table. Well, hmm. So, one point clear. and But look, it's still early days, only a few games gone. But, judging by the teams, right, they haven't done much. 
um, as far as as far as January uh, the summer goes even. So what we'll do is we'll come back at the start of February, and we really will evaluate the situation then, see if things have changed. I'm not actually gonna run through every single um fixture of course i'll do a quick scan through see what the biggest wins was the biggest losers this all that sort of thing because otherwise i'll be here all day and i might run this for maybe about five years just enough time to give Mourinho enough time to get back into the premier league well that's more than enough time even but um say it takes him a year to get from league two they need back-to-back -back promotion but they have a year in case they don't in the championship but we'll just see how it goes um, so right, I will see you guys on the 1st or 2nd of February. Right guys, welcome back and uh, let's just get rid of this mail first. Um, yeah, we don't care about that. Right, so we're going to go straight to Manchester United. And let's just see how they've got over the course. And Gary is still there. Well, well now, isn't that now a surprise now, 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 now. Right, quick look in their transfer history. They've made some business. They spent 59 million on two players. Uh, Joao Cancelo, or Cancelo, however you like to pronounce it. He's a 22 year old, uh, where does he play? Right midfield, a right defender. He seems okay. Um, now, as far as I can remember, United usually um, by Danilo of Real Madrid, the right back. Uh, but this fella, there's plenty of room there for improvement. Mental's not really the best. He does have good teamwork, vision, and work rate, and he's very good off the ball. But he just seems like a very basic right back. Uh, Stefan de Vrij, Vrij, is that how you say it? Um, they've got him off Lazio, and he's at centre back. Not really outstanding, not a lot of money for him, but maybe, I, I don't know why, but he's, he's, he seems to be okay, I suppose. 16 tackling, 16 marking, 15 heading and 15 jumping reach. I don't know, I don't know, I don't think Gary Boy uh, might be out of his depth there. Right, so, they have let more people go as well. Okay, so they have let go... Uh, of Antonio Valencia to Gujan, Gujan. I'm gonna call him Gujan. I like Gujans. Uh, for 4.1 million, eventually rising to 4.9 million. Then they let go of Tahit Shang to Warsaw on loan. Also, Axel Tunz Twanzib to Wimbledon on loan, and Timothy Fosumense on loan to Villa Real. So we're gonna jump into their schedule and let's see how they fared off and they have seemed to be doing pretty well i'm not gonna lie um the last game we left off at was um barbell then they went on arsenal to all tottenham they beat three two uh they beat tottenham three two lost against south southampton so that was their first loss actually no it wasn't that was in the league so they're out of the league cup um, they lost 2 to Southampton, obviously, as you can see. Um, Europa League, they beat Astria Vien 2-0. Oh, there's that. They lost their first game in the Premier League against Leicester. 3-1 against Leicester. Um, they, then, they beat Liverpool. The bastards beat them 2-0. Um, who scored... Sorry, li sorry, sorry. Oh, I got really confused. There. Liverpool beat them two 0 My mistake. Um. Yes, we beat them two 0 Um. Does oh they lost to West Ham one 0 Still, I'm not really uh, really in the table. They're fifth in the table, but by what margin they then lost to Arsenal? 2-1 so they've lost three games in the league uh, so far they're still in the FA Cup and they're out of the League Cup let's have a quick look at how they fared off in Europa League 
stages would be great. Group stage, I think it was J. So they topped the group 18 points. They didn't lose a game. <laughs> they just dominated the whole game. And look, it was an easy, an easy group. They they should have easily won that anyway. Uh, let's see who they got in the fourth knockout stages. Manchester United got PSV. That's but their fourth game is away. That's a game they should be winning though. Still, let's have a quick look at the Premier League table. Have a quick look. Right, so they're in the Europa League spot. 46 points. They are 11 points behind leaders Chelsea. Uh, one point behind Liverpool. And five points off Man City. So, realistically, yeah, still in kind of for a chance um, of Champions League. I think the league is kind of gone, really, at this stage. Um, don't let us sit here and in relegations already. No, 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 no. Well, oh, no, well, they nearly are. Um, but yeah, so that is Manchester United. Now let's go and have a look at uh, Blackpool. And I'm already after seeing really are in the table. Seventh in the table. Well, that's uh, that's not that good, is it? Right, so after... Right, in January they brought in Luke Boyles. Let's have a quick look at him. 33 years of age, jeez. And... Yes, he is a fairly good player, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, for League 2, he is a good player. Yeah. yeah. Heading is good. Yeah, his marking is very good. And his tackling is really good as well. For League 2, that is, they are good attributes for for a player of him sort. But I'd be just a bit worried about his age. Then they brought in John Joe Kenny. Uh, he has to be Irish. Is he Irish? No, he's English. Oh, went off him there. He is a uh, right back, not the paciest. He's a, he looks like more of a defender than right back. Not he wouldn't he uh, wouldn't be asked him to run up the line or cross the ball in anyway. But he's only 19. He's on loan from Everton, and then he brought in Harry Nil. Um, I don't know who they brought him in for. No, they got him on a free transfer. So so far, Rio hasn't spent a penny, and he hasn't brought anything in either. But Harry Nil, he's a defensive midfielder or essential midfielder and yeah once again he does have has half decent stats uh for a league two sides and especially for the players maybe blackpool can only get in but yeah he seems fairly good let's take a quick look at blackpool's schedule um right so ooh, an awful lot of patchy bits there now don't you an awful lot of patchy bits. Right, so we left off after the Blackburn game. They had a bit of a patchy run. They've only, they only got two wins and what two? No, two wins in six games. It's not really the best. Well, five league games. Um, but I don't think they don't have any major. In the league, they're actually doing terrible. I'm not gonna lie. Um, they don't seem to be doing the best. They picked up a 3 0 win against Newport County. We got a little bit of a, a run there, as you can see. Um, 3 0 against Newport, 2 0 against Stevens, 2 1 against Luton, and 3 0 against Hartlepool, and then losing against Grimsby. Um, yeah, he's a bit. There's an awful lot of. There's an awful lot of red donuts in there already. But there's still a bit of time left in the season. Can he come back? Well, he is in a playoff spot. He is in a playoff spot. But, and look at this. There's only four points between seventh and fourth. That is unbelievable. So, mathematically, it is still possible. It is still possible. Now, I wouldn't write it off. Not just yet. But let's go to the end of the season. Um, we're gonna go. What we do is we go to the fourth of July, um, because then we both know both seasons are over, and we will see how to, uh, both teams are out of fair enough. So I will see you on the fourth of July. Right, guys. So welcome back, and we have now come to the end of the season, and just looking at a few of these, right, and on the right hand side here, insecure jobs. Antonio Conte is one of them. May there have been an upset um, 
in the Premier League. We are about to find out. And no, I don't think there was. Gary Bowyer, still the manager. Still the manager. This is amazing. It's amazing. Let's see how they just fared off at the end of the season. And let's see, let's see. Right, I can't really remember where we left off. Um, I think it would have been a little bit about here. So, they drew against Man City. They beat PSV in the first leg and in the second leg. Um, they also beat Atletico Bilbao. They didn't win the Europa League, did they? Fernabache, they beat them in the quarterfinals. 5-0 in aggregate. Oh my god, they were in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. They beat AS Monaco in both. They got to the final. And they won the Europa League. Well. um, So yeah, well. It clearly has been proven that you don't need to be a great manager to manage a great club. Because it's really just, they go, I just mean in the game, in the game, not in real life, of course you need to be a great manager to manage a great club, that's only not only obvious, but in the game, we've seen Gary Bowyer, who used to play for Birmingham, if, if I'm correct, Gary Bowyer used to play for Birmingham, 45, might be thinking of a completely different Gary Bowyer. Yeah, I am. Sorry, wrong Gary Bowyer. Um, but doesn't necessarily have much. He's Blackburn manager, done nothing. He's the manager of Blackpool, well, didn't get time to do anything. And then may not, but he's just won them the Europa League. And he got into the semi-final of the FA Cup. That's amazing. That is amazing. And now I'm looking forward to see what Mourinho has done. Um, actually, just before I do that, I'm going, like, no, there's no point in looking at transfers. But sometimes teams, no, they haven't done anything. Um, oh, they've sold Wayne Rooney. <laughs> they have sold Wayne Rooney. For 6.75 million to LA Galaxy. Now that's a shocker. Eh? That's a shocker. And also, they have sold Mike Carrick to LA Galaxy for 575k. Well, that is. Yeah, that's, that's a shocker. I didn't think that happened. But anyway, that is it. That, that, that's how it is. Um. Let's now go on to Blackpool. And just... I'm hoping... Oh, wait. Oh, I don't know what way this league works, but... I don't think they got promoted. Let's have it. Just re re we'll jump straight into the league table. Um, they finished toward... And... Did they get automatic promotion? They did. They got automatic promotion to League One. Mourinho has pulled it out. And let's have a look at their stats. Oh my god, this is amazing. This is amazing. So, let me see now. We left off. Huh? Where is it filtered? Is it, what's going on? It goes to the forest, the tent of the forest. Hmm. I hate when that happens. Just doesn't show all the games. Right, so here we are. Right. right there. They actually went on a bad streak come the end of the season. And I reckon these two wins really kept them up there. Because they seem to lose out on an awful lot during the season. Um. They have look, but he's he's. It's a noticeable pattern. Look at this, five games uh, in a row. Uh, the start of the season had a good little start of the season. 
Five games in a row, a few losses, a few wins, four games in a row, a few draws, then a few losses. So it's been pitter patter really for Mourinho during the season. Um, let's have a quick look at the league stats and uh, the player overview. So the um, best player for Mourinho really in terms of the league stats was Bri Osaya Samuel. The the fellow with an awful lot of dribbling ability and pace. So I oh, had said prior he was going to be the skillful boy, and um, it's proven most dribbles uh, in a match, and it's himself. But they don't really stand out on any of the stats. Not the team stats. Let's have a look at the team stats, and they don't mark like they don't measure in any of them either. Say for the least goals conceded, they're the tourist team, which isn't too bad. Most clean sheets, seventh, most tackles, second, um, most felts are not up there in that one. Um, best average possession, they were second in the league for that one. Um, most pass complete, they weren't in the running for that one at all. Most headers complete, 8. Most crosses complete, 2nd again. And 7th for most goals. Let's have a look at the last one now. Best to hit the target. They didn't even run in that one. So they've been pretty... Hmm, pretty iffy. Um, let's see, let's see. We'll look at, look at player of the month. we we'll look at manager of the year. Who got manager of the year? It was Paul Tisdale. Right. Exeter. Um, oh, wait. Hold on. Was that here? Was that this year's one, is it? I don't know. Yeah, it is. Sorry. It is this one. Um, player of the year was James Cappinger. Let's see. A player's team of the year. Right. So, you had Slockholm. Slockholm, or whatever his name is. Featuring from uh, Blackpool, really, he bet he is the only player. Uh, top goal scorer that was wasn't them. Um, young player. Oh, so they've done well. They have done well to come back. Let's. I've got to go back to you know really quickly. What we done? Got to go back. Just, just have a quick look at the stats in the league, and uh, see how they fared off. Right, so let's have a look at the team stats first. Uh, they were best at hit the target. Um, most goals, they ranked fifth. Most crosses, they ranked nowhere. Most headers, they ranked nowhere. Average possession, they sixth. Uh, most pass to complete, they were nowhere. Most fields, they were second. Right, okay. Um, most tackles won, they were fought, Lead, least conceded, they were tied for, well you could say they were fought, they were either tied for toward or they were fought, because they're both on 36, Chelsea and United, so tied for toward or tied for fought, whichever one you'd like to say, and most clean sheets, they were fought, and let's have a quick look at our player stats, See, right, so these goals conceded the hey, it came fourth, right? We're aware that um, most key passes was Juan Mata, Mata, Juan Mata, um, most clean sheets was Peter Check, the hey, it was tied for well, he was tied, <laughs> was tied for right, oh no, he was tied for second with, with Bravo, and um, most key tackles was Wes Morgan. And no main night player ranked. Lauren Cashelny was um, most tackles in a match. Um, no United player ranking there either. N'Golo Kante covered most distance in 90 minutes. No United player ranked there. Most dribbles in a match, Eden Hazard. No United player there either. Oh my god. That was the next United player, Yanazoi. 
Then you had most assists, Juan Mata again is there with 12. He's tied for toured with two other players. Um, then of course he had most key passes, top goal scorer was Harry Kane with 22 goals and Ibrahimovic was second with 21. So it was really tight for that. And then best I hit the target was Harry Kane and no United player featured. <laughs> so now guys, um, I don't know what to do now. Should I go on and do one more season and see how Mourinho can get on? I think I will. I'll do one more season and then I'll call it at that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the end of August. I'm going to go to September and we'll see what business they've done. So I'll see you then guys. Okay guys, change of plan. Um, I've kind of made this one now to make sense. Instead of giving you a really, really long video to look at, like this would run on for over an hour, um, instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the video into half. So I'm going to put this one's going to be part one, the next bit will be part two. They'll be out the exact same day, not, of course, not the exact same time, but then again, maybe the exact same time. It's just so that way you can watch part one and you don't have to watch the part two until you're ready. You know, in case you're busy and you just want to look, you have 40 minutes to spare. Okay, I'll watch part one, I'll watch part two later then. You know, so what I'll do is I'll wrap this one up here and I'll come straight back with part two and we can work from there with that. So thanks anyway, and thank you very much, boys, for tuning into this brand new episode on the channel. I really hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and show us your support. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment down below and let me know what two managers you'd like me to do the switch with next. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Also, follow me over on Twitter at The Near Gamer for all the latest updates on my channel, of previous episodes, new episodes, and of course, any updates on the channel. So, thanks very much, guys. Adios.